These are Paiute harpoon tips that we made last year. Now we've already made a video about how we make these using entirely primitive tools and methods, but this video is all about testing their power, penetration, and effectiveness in bringing fish out of the water. But first we need to do a little work on the foreshaft of the spear, so we're going to make ourselves some chopping slash scraping tools from a couple black jade stones. Now that we've serrated the edge a bit, we can shape the end of the foreshaft and taper it the way we want it. Okay, this fits the way we want it now, and we were feeling pretty good about our chances for success on this day. But one thing we've learned for sure is that success usually does not come without first going through some major failure. And this day had no shortages of obstacles and failures, plenty of missed shots and frustration, which is normal, but what happened next was not normal. Our camera came loose and fell to the bottom of the river. We had no idea where, or when it had happened. So now what? Where do you even start to look for this needle in a haystack that could have fallen off just about anywhere in this giant river? Well, one of the lessons I learned growing up is that we don't quit and we do not shy away from attempting to accomplish things that might seem hopeless, like finding a tiny little GoPro camera in the middle of this giant river somewhere. Well, long story short, we eventually did find our camera through persistence and some divine intervention, and even had our first successful shot of the day soon after finding it. The cruel irony being, however, that once we finally speared our fish, the camera angle was positioned just a bit too high and missed the shot. But look how this harpoon tip penetrated and cannot be pulled free. This tip performed exactly how we had hoped. So now with a little momentum under our belt, we were feeling pretty confident that most of our misfortunes were way behind us. We switched locations on the river and decided to test out our largest harpoon tip, which we hadn't yet had success with. And we just could not let summer pass by without finding success with this one final harpoon tip. But by now we should have known to never count out troubles and misfortune, which apparently followed us downstream and made a devastating reappearance on this dive. Our one final harpoon tip shattered. Fortunately, we were able to recover the bone, but all other components of the tip were broken and swept downstream. Now, the reason this was so discouraging was because we were pretty much considering this the last day of the warm season before the weather turned, and we hated the thought of going out on a discouraging note like that. What's that proverb say? Necessity is the mother of invention? Well, we were feeling like spearing a fish on this day with this bone tip was a necessity. Now, all we need is an invention. Well, it occurred to us, what if we used one of our favorite modern resources to get us out of this jam? This is artificial deer sinew, which we've linked to in our description if you want to check it out. And it's strong, it's thin, and it's incredible for binding materials together in situations where you need a tight lashing and it has served us well for countless tasks over the years. Now we need it to come through for us once again. If this works, it'll change forever the way we go about making these harpoon tips. Now let's see what happens. Well, it wasn't long before we spotted our target and the shot was dead on center. But hitting the target is only half the battle in spearfishing. The real test here is what will this harpoon tip do once the fish starts to work its way off the end of the foreshaft? Will it turn sideways inside the fish the way it was designed to, or will it pull straight out? Well, so far, so good. It was quickly evident that this fish was gonna follow us anywhere we took it. And we're taking it out of the water and home to our dinner table. Thank you, wax cordage, fake deer sinew. You have saved the day again. Now, at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, hey, this is all fine and interesting, but when are they gonna make a no-char flint and steel fire in this video? And what tinder will they use? Okay, we know, making no-char flint and steel fires has become a reoccurring theme in our videos, and we make no apologies, because it's a significant thing to know about several tinders in the wild that can catch and hold a spark from a flint and steel without any charring. And today's tinder is Pacific water leaf wrapped in some cedar to hold it in place. Now stay tuned to future videos to see the dramatic expansion of our no-char tinder success list because it is growing. 
and it's guaranteed to have tenders on it that have not been but deserve to be discussed. Wilderness Strong detailed, up-close, educational videos covering bushcraft, nature, ethnobotany, and wilderness survival. If you like what we do, let us know by hitting the thumbs up and subscribing. Also, leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of content you want to see the most. And thank you for watching. <laughs>